and welcome to the React Show, brought to you from occupied Miwok territory by me, your host, Thomas, and a lot of sleep under the stars. <laughs> Episode 69, News Roundup for December, Chat GPT Talks in Your Own Words, SWR 2.0 Mutates. Faster app creation with Wasp. Secure CI interactions. Less futzing React CMS. And using Flash in 2022? Thank you for joining us! Uh, Before we get into your React News Roundup for December 2022, this show is brought to you by us. Foundations of High Performance React is a super in-depth but concise book I wrote on the internals of React. In it, you learn how to build your own version of React that uses the same internal algorithms as React itself. By the end of the book, you will know exactly how React renders your code, how to make your code more performant, and generally how to write code better suited to React. You can find the book at thereactshow.com. And while you're there, you can also find a link to our Patreon if you want to show your support for the show and enable us to continue providing the latest React news and commentary. The big bit of commentary for December is, of course, chat GPT. Yep, it can write your React programs for you. Yep, it knows more than you do. Except... When it doesn't, of course. Um, If you aren't familiar with ChatGPT somehow, uh, it's a new AI chatbot that is good, like really, really good. Um, I had it, you know, write an invoice program for me in Ruby on Rails and extend it with all sorts of features like detecting if billable time overlaps. Um, For my React code, one really cool feature I've been using it for is inputting the source code from components and then ChatGPT will read back to me in English form what it thinks the React component actually does and is for. It's definitely a really nice way to verify what I or someone else wrote is maybe forgetting to do something or, you know, does something strange. Very cool. Of course, Chat GPT can do a lot more than just programming. Um, I'd really encourage you to check it out and play with it some if you haven't already. Um, and uh, if you're you know, on Stack Overflow and, and wanting some more points, you'll also want to check it out because it turns out Chat GPT can not only create the answers for you, but generally produces answers in a higher quality form than the average comment on Stack Overflow. Uh, yeah, so maybe we don't need Stack Overflow anymore. You have Chat GPT. There's reasons why this isn't exactly true, but hey, you know, it, it's fun nonetheless. Um, Dan Abramov, one of the most public figures on the React development team, was playing around with Chat GPT and noticed that it responds to <laughs> some of their React questions using their own past wording. Um, So, you know, Dan has written a lot of the documentation for React. And so clearly ChatGPT has like been trained using the documentation that Dan wrote. And in a a tweet, Dan said, this immediately made me wonder about the docs I'm writing now. In the longer run, am I writing them for human readers or for this beast to consume and remix. Yep, uh, <laughs> I guess newsflash, if you put stuff on the internet, it may just take on a life of its own. Uh, just watch out though. Chat GPG is terrible at knowing its own limitations and will definitely steer you off a cliff without any warning whatsoever. It's not just world-changing chatbots in the news, though. We also have a major update from the Next.js team for SWR 2.0. SWR is a client-side React library for uh, managing data fetching and caching based on the stale while revalidate methodology. It's a library that I've used extensively, and it's quite popular. I I really like it. Um, So SWR 
2.0 comes with new mutation APIs, improvements to optimistic UI updates, new dev tools, and better support for concurrent rendering. Um, for the new mutation APIs, it adds the use SWR mutation hook, which makes it much, much easier to create SWR integrations for mutations. It handles a lot of things you had to do manually in the past, like disabling fetches on first load and optimistically updating. I'm really looking forward to um, updating my existing SWR code with this new hook. It will, I mean, I basically wrote a version of this hook um, myself because it's just what you need. Um, so it's really fantastic to see the team adding support for this. And along those lines, the SWR team has also made it easier in general to specify optimistic UI updates. Um, so if you don't know, optimistic UI updates just means that after the user submits a mutation, they can immediately see and interact with the result instead of waiting for the server to commit the change and send updated data back to the client. Um, I, I really like optimistic updates whenever they make sense. It just makes your application feel a lot better and, and more responsive. Um, the update also comes with some nice quality of life enhancements to the loading states and caching previous results for improving the user experience and things like search boxes. Um, they have a cool demo of that. It looks great. Looking forward to trying that out as well. And of course, things are always changing in the web world. And Next.js's new, uh, what they call their, their app paradigm, um, is actually intended to replace much of what SWR does. Um, they're continuing. They're they're planning to continue development on SWR and you know providing it as a, a standalone drop-in library. So that's not going anywhere. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how things sort of shake out in the meantime um, with this new app uh, paradigm introduction. Um, but yeah, an exciting update to SWR. Bzz. <laughs> New release of the Wasp uh, DSL framework for specifying React web applications. Uh, Wasps and DSLs. What is not to love? <laughs> um, I mean, not everyone loves Wasps. I, I think, uh, I guess, Technically, I like bees more than wasps, but hey, I'll take it, you know. Um, the Wasp team has released many updates uh, to their DSL framework system that enables you to declaratively define many aspects of your application without having to write all of the boilerplate code for setting up things like databases and auth and things like that. Uh, this new release comes with general stability improvements, TypeScript support, Tailwind, async jobs, full stack authentication, including with Google if you want to tie yourself into that ecosystem for some reason, um, and VS Code integration if, uh, yeah, you're not like me using Evacs, uh, but like most people that do web, apparently. Um, yeah, so if you're looking, uh, especially for something that makes it easier to quickly create like personal apps or prototypes, it's definitely worth checking out. We all like to be able to quickly create new apps, right? Um, but security is also important. And one thing that has always frustrated me about um, CI or continuous integration environments like GitHub Actions was that it was difficult to use with multi-factor authentication, um, especially when you want to use automation to publish something like an NPM package where you want or are even required to use MFA. Um, many people just resort to doing it all manually on their local machine because integrating MFA into CI is either not easy or, or not able to be done in a very secure manner. Um, but the newly released Wait for Secrets open source GitHub action was recently published that makes this much easier. You can include this action in your GitHub action script and it will print a URL during the run that you can visit in your browser to complete the MFA step. Really cool. Definitely looking forward to uh, checking this one out. With the newly announced Vercel Edge config, you don't need to wait for anything though. Vercel recently detailed a new data store that can be used within their ecosystem in serverless functions and elsewhere. The new system is, in their words, 
ultra low latency and works well apparently for feature flags and a b test systems that type of data storage so yeah if you like debugging serverless functions and relying on opaque proprietary systems then this just might be the right thing for you i never like debugging or editing content in headless react cms systems either uh Enter a new React CMS, though. React bricks. Like, you know, bricks that you use to build a, you know, house or Lego bricks, that type of thing. Uh, React bricks allows you to visually manage your CMS content, including with your own custom React components. Uh, headless CMS systems always sounded great to me in theory, but I always found them to be a pain to actually create content for because uh, you can't really very easily visually see your changes as you make them. Um, so React Bricks makes this much easier because you can just directly visually create and manage your content. And of course, like I mentioned, the best part is you can create your own custom React components to be included in the system where you can visually you know, interact with them in your CMS. And for a fun adventure to read, Robin Allen posted an enthralling story on how they're able to continue supporting Flash games that they wrote decades ago. Yes, Flash is dead and for many good reasons, but it also had some really cool features that made game development easy in the earlier days of the web. And it's neat to see that those early games don't have to just die. I mean, I remember spending many hours as a child on dial-up, you know, playing these Flash games. And, you know, they're a lot of fun just because they're written in a, a technology that's dead, you know, doesn't mean we have to lose them. And so I found this story really cool. Robin details their various attempts at trying to convert their Flash games to something that was still usable today and didn't rely on some weird Adobe thing, right? Um, including their failed attempts and successes in converting things like the vector graphics to rasteri rasterized formats that graphics cards are much happier with. It's a really great read, very inspiring, and a nice break from the fast pace of modern web development. You can find links to all of these news uh, pieces in the uh, show notes in the description. Um, yeah, but it's uh, time to wind down the, the pace of this show. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, what do you think? Have you had a, a chance to try ChatGPT yet? Uh, has it written any cool React programs for you? Do you think it's terrible? Do you hate it? I mean, I, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but thanks again uh, and hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.